Hello everyone, it's Simon Clark here. It's my pleasure to welcome you to another episode of Take A Pew. Oi, 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 what's going on? Hello, mate. Well, you weren't here, so I just started without you. Oh, right. And by the way, what was all that? Hello, everyone. Well, it's what you say, isn't it? Hello, everyone. But don't go, hello, everyone. I think you do, mate. Oh, well, whatever. It's my job to introduce the show. Oh, well, go on. Hello, everyone. Oi. Sorry, mate. <coughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another outing of the Take A Pew podcast. As you've probably noticed, Simon is here with me. Hello, everyone. Stop it. And together, we have hauled our Take A Pew Pew all the way to the village of Newington in Kent to meet with our guest, the rector of the Six Benefice in the Diocese of Canterbury. Yes, this is Take A Pew with the Reverend Julian Staniforth. Julian Staniforth. <laughs> Here we are in the vicarage next to the Church of St. Mary and the home of the Reverend Julian Staniforth. Julian, thank you for having us and please take a pew. Thank you. Hi Julian, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself to our lovely listeners. So I'm Julian, I'm married to Andrea. We have three sons, David, Samuel and Paul. Um, I'm 62. As the people that. say, I don't look it. <laughs> don't and look you it can that. reinforce that. <laughs> <laughs> don't look a day over 61. <laughs> well, thanks. And look, we're looking forward to hearing all about your journey in life so far and what you get up to here in the six. Yes, and hopefully we'll be able to get into packed lunches and random questions. But let's kick off by looking back in time. Where did it all start for you, Julian? I understand it was somewhere west of Ulaanbaatar. Where earth is that? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere east of where you were born, I think. I had to look it up. It's in Mon Mongolia or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I, I was born in a place called Sutton. Oh, yes. Yeah. St. Helier, Helier Hospital. And I was brought up in a place called Belmont, just to the south of there. Uh, so I was brought up there till, yeah. I went off to university. Right, OK. Oh, like so there we are. The young Julian at uh, in... Sutton, and uh, so we have a question for you, Julian. Our question is... What were you like at school? Were you a little bit geeky? Or were you a little bit freaky? Or were you a little bit cheeky? What were you like at school? Yes, Julian, what were you like at school? School, gosh, that seems such a long time ago. Long time I mean, ago. I suppose yeah. I started school when I was four. I went to a prep school till I was oh. about eight. And when I was there, I was known as Staniforth. Oh, okay. And then I went yeah. to the pri local primary school at about nine, and I was known as Julian. Oh, oh right. okay. okay. And, so it's uh, the class divide, the great class <laughs> divide. <laughs> and it was sort of, uh, yeah, I just remember that that difference that was being made yeah. there. I suppose I was always a, a good student, yeah. 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 And uh, then I went to the local, well, the comprehensive school in Sutton called Greenshaw. Stayed there till, till A-levels. What A-levels did you do? I did French, Ooh, yeah. I did Russian, wow. and maths with stats. So well, uh, I started doing Russian, I think, when I was about oh, the old third year. Yes, right. And we used that to... That must have been unusual, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why our school did it, but yeah. Um, yeah. I think in that area. I mean, you're talking a few years ago. Whether yeah. there was a thought about how relationships with Russia oh, yeah. might yeah. develop. Yeah. So, what were you like at school? Quite a good student, a well-behaved yeah. young man. Yeah, I think I, I, punctuality was not my forte. Oh, Always right. a moment of running down the road and just seeing the bus disappear off. <laughs> yes, it was all very. It all sounds very familiar. Um, and what did you get up to outside school? Um, I went That's through, lad. Um, I, I did things like Cubs, Scouts, oh, okay. uh, primary school age, then went into the Scouts in the early, early years, um, and then became an Air Cadet, went into the Air Cadets. I was always impressed by the Cadets, it was just, just it really cool. Very smart. Yeah, yeah it was, very I mean, smart. at that time, it's partly because I was interested in, in aeroplanes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I was at that point in my early teens thinking about maybe I would grow up to be an RAF pilot. Wow, wow. Okay. And then I got to about the age of 16 and my ideas changed and I didn't. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I was able to go on camps. 
you know, went to Germany, went to Gibraltar, oh, wow. yeah. did a bit of air experience, did a yeah. bit of aerobatics, emerged from that with a little bag yeah. full of um, the contents of my stomach. Oh, which, oh, but, uh, so you, you fancy being a pilot, but that, that was just sort of a schoolboy dream, or was it? Did it yeah. Was it, yeah seriously considered at all do you think? well I, I think at one point when certainly in my early teens it, it sort of influenced some of the choices i took at o level but then i got yeah. to the age of 16. i think partly because i've been on these camps as well you get to see a little bit of what service life is like yeah. and i just thought yeah. you know what yeah no but my eldest half brother funnily enough uh, is uh is a, is a was a, an RAF pilot yeah so i remember different experiences in aircraft Mm. Yeah, what okay. sticks in my mind is in the, in the back of an RAF of Hercules, uh, yeah. going round and round in circles. You know, yeah. come to land and then off it would go again. Yeah. It would go round and then come down. You're off yeah. again because they're big old beasts, yeah, aren't they? Uh, those Hercules. Yeah, yeah. It didn't do the contents yeah. of my stomach much good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we seem to be seeing quite a lot of the contents of your yeah. stomach. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly worried about yeah. some of the subjects we're going to come on to later, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll survive. Yeah. So did, where have we got to? Got to A-levels? So you've done yeah. your A-levels? What happened after that? Well, I took my A-levels and then I went to Aston in Birmingham. Weirdly, there's a, there's a road very close by to Aston University that's called Staniforth Street or something. Oh, oh. okay. It was meant to be. Yeah. It's a sign. <laughs> well, they would have had us. Most streets have most, a sign, yeah, don't they? Most do, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, did a four-year course yeah, and, then, right. uh, and then was on um, had a, a year abroad mm, as part yeah. of that. What French. course did you do? I did French with uh, business studies. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So that's hence the year abroad. So okay. yes, yeah, so I spent um, a year in in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I worked for. I did a, what was called. I was a stagiaire. That's the French word for oh, industrial yes. placements. I've been a stagiaire. For stagiaire. Um, That's a good word. Yeah. For uh, for Renault. Renault. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so sorry. you went from Aston to Renault. So you went a bit, bit downhill, really. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yes, the go. <laughs> yes. But that was in many ways that was a significant year in my kind of spiritual journey as well. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Go on then. Tell us a bit about that. So uh, I, I mean, just to backtrack a little bit, mm. I suppose. Um, I, I became a Christian in 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 Paris, um, and I suppose a culmination of a process that, in some ways, goes back to school when um, there was a classmate who won RE lesson, we were about 15, stood up in front of three class loads of us and, and talked about how he had become a Christian. He was brave really to stand up in front of, you know, three class loads, about 90 kids that we were to, to share that. So it stuck in my mind. Um, and for me, that then didn't pick up again until uh, university. So one evening in the hall in my first year, there was a knock at the door right. and there were these two guys standing there saying, we're, we're, you know, we're doing a, a survey, we're doing a questionnaire to see what people know or think about Christianity. Yeah. And have you got a few moments? Would you be interested in ask, answering a few questions? And as I did that questionnaire with them, I realized there's, there's a lot I didn't know. But obviously that planted a bit of a it planted. seed. And then yeah. soon afterwards, um, I'm started going out with Andrea uh, and Andrea is uh, uh, well she's a vicar's daughter um, but that's almost irrelevant in a sense as to why but one of the first things that she said to me was that she was practicing Christian right. and at that point I thought ah oh. <laughs> um, and I suppose over the next two couple of years before going to France it was always one of those topics that she would like to talk about but it was kind of like i would keep arms length. yeah yeah um, but we you know we had lots of conversations and one of the things she gave me was a little book like booklet by an organization called campus crusade for christ mm -hmm. they they produced a little booklet called knowing god personally mm -hmm. it was like a little guide to the basics giving you a point of uh, bringing you to a point of making a commitment i guess right um, so when i went to Paris at the end of my second year I'd, I'd, I'd been given a couple of books by somebody from uh, Campus Crusade one book by a guy called Josh Carpenter mm. more than a carpenter yeah and my, another yeah. book by Michael Green called Man Alive and I don't know why I took these books with me but 
I did. So, so these were in my bag when I was going off to France. Yeah, it's yeah. all kind of sneaking up on you over a period of time, isn't it? Sneaking yeah. up on me. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost a bit like that. I can remember one, one, one moment. I think when he, when, when I was at Aston, and there was lots of these questions, and, and Andrew at that point was, you know, posing challenging questions. I must say, <laughs> walking around saying, shouting at the sky, saying, "Go away, leave me alone." <laughs> difficult early start in in Paris so I just found myself reading these books yeah. having that booklet and then one day I thought you know decided to say that prayer for myself um, okay. yeah. and that's when it started and the next thing was in that book it says um, find a local church right. um, just as a sort of fun activity <laughs> and as you do <laughs> and there you are an Englishman in Paris thinking yeah. where do I look for a church where mm. do I go so I had a guidebook, and it and it said Eglise Eglise uh, Anglaise or, or Eglise Anglican, and I just picked out the top of the church at the top of that list and thought I'm, I'm going to go along there and find out. Mm -hmm. So one evening during the week um, after work, went into the centre of Paris, found it. It's, it wasn't. It's not a typical church building. It's, it was like a a balloon, a, an office block. Oh, no, not no, quite no. a balloon. No, not a balloon. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But it's literally look, walked into an office block. <laughs> and and mm. while I was looking at the notice boards, the then Assistant chaplain came down and said, oh, can I help you? So, would you mind leaving? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who are you? 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 Yes. And he said, just come on Sunday. So I, I went to the service, went upstairs, sat right at the back, and then went downstairs into the, uh, into the coffee area. And then, you know, somebody spotted me, a chap called Jim, and introduced me to people, and it kind of went from there. We really. stayed for lunch. Now, that was an English church or an english -speaking it's an english-speaking church, church yeah, called yeah. st michael's right. michael's paris which is right in the center yeah would have been it was originally yeah. would have been known as the embassy church and right. that became your regular so that became our regular worship. place yeah, yeah. Great. got involved in a small group got baptized got confirmed there right oh wow right. so so that was so fair, as you said at the outset of quite an important year it was oh yeah it was it was, year, it, was it was it was a pivotal year so you had a foundation there that you could come back to later which was very helpful. I think when, when we spoke briefly um, recently, did you say there were a couple of celebrity people kind of came out of that church as well? Or were there yeah, I mean, during, during my time there, so interesting looking back, um, there was a certain young oil executive there oh, and his right. wife at the time. And he, I, I, I remember him standing up and, uh, and doing a talk. And uh, of course, he turns out to be somebody people now know as the Archbishop. Right. Of Canterbury, <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah. good old Saint Michael's. Do so yeah. good old Saint Michael's, and I think there have been other people since mm. who've gone through. So it has been, a, I think, in its own way, a significant place mm. yeah. in yeah. people's spiritual journey. Yeah. I guess the, all the Parisian fun had to end at some point. So you came back, finished your degree off. I so I finished my degree off in in, Ber in Birmingham. So I then, uh, I when I graduated, I got a post as training management accountant with Philips Electronics and so came back south um, so I was a trainee for about three years spent a couple of years in Croydon and then a time at the head office in London at which point we commute I commuted from Colchester because by, the, by then I'd married Andrea we'd started our married life off in Colchester and eventually I then went to work for Philips in Colchester. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how was your faith? Was it sort of just bubbling along a bit? Just at the start of our married life together, then that's when we really got ingo involved in the mm. church. Mm. Right. In, uh, in Colchester, a place called, church called uh, St. John's. We got involved in there as home group leaders. We got involved in a worship group. Of uh, music, you mean? With music, yeah, with yeah, music. Yeah, so yeah. Andrea, Andrea, as you know, plays the piano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by then I... Plucked up the courage to play Ooh, my guitar. Oh, pardon the pun. Sorry. To play yeah. my gu guitar in, in public, which is funny enough, it, and even the start of that goes back to the time in Paris because there was there was a church weekend at the end of the the year I was there, and the speaker there was somebody called Sandy Miller. Yeah, of, you know, HTV. H H H H yeah. And at the time he was a cure, and I, I remember him talking mm -hmm. and saying. Something along the lines of, you know, encouraging people to offer their gifts, saying if you, even if you can only play two or three chords on the guitar, maybe you could offer that. And I thought, mm. I can play two or three chords yeah, on the guitar. Yeah, I can play four or five. So yeah. that's why I started. Mm. That was the start. And prior to that, I'd only ever played for myself quietly. Right. It's quite nerve-wracking, isn't it, when you do it? I remember, doing, I remember oh, when coming to play with you guys in the church, when I first started playing guitar and I came along. 
Yeah. And the first thing Ian said to me, oh, that wasn't too bad, but you're completely out of tune. Yeah. Well, thanks, yeah. mate. Not the guitar. <laughs> it's actually just me. you me. out of tune. <laughs> and actually, you were out of tune. I right? was, I yeah, was. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. It's quite daunting, isn't it? It yeah. is. Cause, so I started in, as, in a small group for that period of time, but I didn't pick it up again until we were in Colchester and we went away for a, a parish weekend. Andrew said to me, well, you know, why don't you bring a guitar and if you feel like having a go, have a go. So I did and... We've, out of that just carried on that's yeah. brilliant that's great that's great yeah. to do so it's lucky that Sandy Miller didn't say so if anyone can for example s fly a small aircraft because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. the cogs might well, have yeah, completely yeah, different I haven't got that far yet yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it on a show next week and we can do something doing a few loop the loops and yeah. <laughs> anyone with any aerobatics it's, it's, experience it's funny because yeah. you know Somebody like Sandy Millie won't realise that there's been two things he said to me that have been significant. There was a meeting in a place called, was it All Souls Woodford Wells? Um, and we'd driven from Colchester down to this meeting. The traffic had been absolutely appalling. We wondered if we were actually going to get there. And uh, as they would at, the, at this time, they were talking to, they would have what they call a time of ministry at the end. And um, so. Um, Sandy, Sandy Miller again he said oh there's there's somebody here called Julian mm. and there's something about a word for about some call to some kind of ministry mm. and that you might and so there I was sitting thinking I'm Julian <laughs> so uh, having turned to Andrew he said to me go on go up so I went forwards for to be prayed for what emerged was what they said was we're not sure what it is but it will become clear with the passage of time. Okay. And it's that, that almost that phrase, it will become clear with the passage of time that, that stuck with me. So, so that was in Colchester. Where did life take you? So then that? from Colchester, so whilst I was in Colchester, um, I was asked if I'd be interested to do a, a secondment with Phillips to one of the countries in Europe. Right. And at that time it could have been uh, Holland, Germany, and France, the, yeah. the three particular. So you've done France, France, so you obviously didn't you do didn't that again. Because well, it's funny because the, the the right career thing to do <laughs> would have been to go to Holland. Yes, because yeah. Phillips, of course, is yeah. a Dutch company. Yeah. That's what you did. But, good. but actually, yeah. no, we thought we don't want to go to Holland. We want to go to France. Mm. So off we went. Fantastic. In uh, late yeah. nineteen eighty-seven. Okay. Right. So whereabouts was that in France? Was that sort of relatively near to where you were? Oh uh, yeah, it, very, very similar area yeah. to where I've been before. Did you go back to the yeah, same church? That, yeah. So when we, when we go, when we went back, we went back to St Michael's. Oh, yeah, oh, fantastic. Back to the same church. And how did you feel going back there? So there were some familiar faces, but in many yeah. ways it was going back in a in a completely different way. In yeah, many ways. different role. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And how long did you spend over in France this time? So we were due to spend three years, but I think we came back after about two and a half. Right. Because yeah, I was asked yeah. if I would go back to take a, a role in Phillips in South, South London. Mm. Come 1992, um, uh, one more, again, one morning I was asked if I would be interested in being the finance director for Teletext. Right. Um, wow. <laughs> so, so how did that arise then? Well, literally like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> my then boss said... You know, really? this, this this project that started up, Phillips was a, was taking a share with the Daily Mail Group, along with the joint venture company. Oh, okay. uh, it was due to due to launch in the beginning of January, and it was and it was literally something. It was along the lines of somebody had dropped out. It was due to take it, and they asked me if I'd be interested. And I was thinking about what next. Yeah. So mm. it was kind of a bit of a no brainer to say. Why not? Yeah. And just for the benefit of our younger viewers, i.e., anyone under. 45 probably <laughs> uh, what uh, what was teletext well long before the internet arrived there was that you could get information and blocky graphics on your television mm. couldn't you it was amazing to think now it's, it's now amazing to think that's how yeah we were yeah. saying on the way over that how, yeah. that's how we used to get up-to-date information uh, constantly. yeah news yeah. yeah but teletext holidays was very big right yeah. so i was there in the 1990s in particular mm. And so it was the heyday, really, really, of that, wasn't it? Oh, it yeah. was, yeah. 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 I think when I started, and because it, it, it was a, like a new company, um, yeah. and I think I, when I started, there was uh, about no, seven or eight people. Gosh. And my, um, and funny, yeah. <laughs> funny enough, the managing director at the time was a, was a Julian as well. 
So we'd have these moments where we'd say, hello, Julian. How are you, Julian? You know? It would have been even funny if everyone who worked there was called Julian. No, <laughs> it would have been, that would have been fortunately, they weren't. <laughs> but, but I think, you know, by, by the end of the, no the, the 90s, we'd grown to about 450 people. Wow. That's All amazing. called Julian. Fortunately not, because no, yeah. that would have got very, very confusing. <laughs> yeah. And then the noughties was down the hill. It's a bit like, you yeah, know, the grand yeah. old Duke of York. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. and then came down the hill in the noughties. That's massive growth, isn't it? I mean, what a transformation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was. And of course, yeah. that's where we first... Uh, yes, you and I did a bit of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, was he to put up with working with it? God, well, he, was our, he was our audit partner. <laughs> <laughs> Only occasionally. <laughs> yeah, right. Pop that's over a few times a year. That was fantastic. It. But... Um, that was so, and then, but you're still ploughing a uh, a commercial furrow at this yeah. point. So when did the yeah. old mm. all the dog collar stuff come into it? Uh, I suppose at the, in my time at Teletex, probably in the late 1990s, um, I you know, been we were very involved in our local church, and I, the church we were in at that time. Another part of the story is in at the same time I started with Teletex we became part of a, a church plant from the local church. So we became part of a team of about, gosh, it must have been about 50 adults, 20 kids. I can remember we all left one Sunday morning and the following Sunday morning, we met in a rather small, nothing special gym in a local school and started a new congregation called Springfield Church, which is still going strong. Oh, great. Fantastic. 30 odd years yeah. later mm. and uh, com completely new. So. We, it meant that we spent about 18 years or so in a church that was not what people would typically think of a church. Mm, wow. cool. That's where I also picked up the guitar again. Um, and in my own in time, also then started to, to lead worship myself, not oh, just yeah. as part of a group. Yeah. But ar around that time, um, I started to have this wish to go on a retreat. Right. I think it's through things that I've been reading. I've been mm. reading a lot of kind of Celtic related mm. yeah. Christianity. So I booked literally just 24 hours. And this was in the midst of a particular period, which was quite stressful. I think it was probably around the time of looking at the license renewal. Right, and, I was, and I was working too, too hard getting, mm. yeah. getting stressed over this because it was, it was rather yeah. important at the time. Yes. Yes. And, um, I remember that. So, yeah. And I, yeah. I just went for 24 hours mm. and, and there's something about that that made a difference. Mm. I came from, from being quite uptight and stressed. I came away finding, you know, I was in, in a better place. So it started a pattern for, from then of every year going, going on a retreat that started oh, you do that too yeah in the summer yeah. yeah yeah so i was you know one day two days three so it became almost like a long weekend 2004 i i was asking lots of questions about you know do i still want to be doing right. accounting in, in yeah. x number of yeah. years time yeah. and then thinking i don't know what to do and, and exploring different directions yeah i was grappling with what to do and i met with this particular sister sister alison joy who i'm still in contact with talking about this and um and then the following yeah. year i uh, yeah. went back to, similarly as part of this pattern that i developed met with the same sister talking updating about where things had uh, had got to and um she said just asked me a very simple direct question she said have you thought of being a priest at which point my brain did whoa no <laughs> You thought, blast, I've been found out. <laughs> and I can only describe it as being, because I, I think this was towards the beginning of the weekend and I was there for mm. about three, three days. Yeah. So this question having been posed, it just wouldn't go away. And uh, it, re it remained all day. And there was one evening, they have a prayer room upstairs and the passage she'd given me to think about was where Jesus washes Peter's feet. And they had this picture, yeah. large picture of, of that by an artist called Sega Coda. I was aware of sitting there almost like mm. this, almost aware of an inner struggle with the idea of letting my feet be washed mm. as if I was Peter. Yeah. And, um, and it, almost, in the midst of that, there's just a fleeting thought that came almost like question, which was, are you willing? And, in, in, and I found myself saying, yes. Uh, this is it. Wow. Yeah. So I, I drove home, um, walked in yeah. the door. Andrew sort of said, well, you know, how's the weekend? Good yeah. weekend. 
Andrew, what's a good question to yeah. ask you? <laughs> I'm thinking of exploring ordination. What do you think? <laughs> what was her reaction to that? Then? And her reaction was two. Yeah. She said two things. The first one was, um, I'm not surprised. Okay. Yeah. But this is scary. Hmm. So that was, that was, uh, and yeah. so that has led to here ultimately. Mm. Yes. And you had to, you obviously did your training and the theological training at some yeah. point. And yeah. So what? I did, I started in 2007, mm. uh, doing uh, work, studying part time, ha ha. Yeah. Any, anybody, uh, yeah. whilst I was still working full time for Teletext. Oh, really? Gosh. Gosh, how does that work? It was hard work. Yeah. yeah. But you managed to bungle through all that training and work and hard work and, and came out ordained at some point. Yes, so I was ordained deacon um, in Canterbury Cathedral. Oh, smart. Yeah, just yeah. just a bit down the road from down here. Road, yes, you know, very nice. The mother church, as it were, of, yes. the, yeah. of the Church of England and mm. the Anglican Communion, which in its way is, is, is special. Yes, actually. it is, absolutely is. Um, yes, I was ordained 3rd of July, 2010, mm -hmm. and um, by Archbishop Rowan, Okay. Ooh. At the time. More celebrity Gosh. connections. Um, so you're basically surrounded by archbishops <laughs> through most of your <laughs> well, travels, you know, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is something about Archbishop Rowan, you know, when you meet him, there's something, mm. he, he has that ability to... Um, That'll be him now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has that ability to make you feel as though he's known you all, all, all along. Mm. It's quite, un yeah. Right, yeah. quite uncanny, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, so you moved into Canterbury, so you had to get a job somewhere in this yeah, diocese so, then, yeah. So we, I was a curate in St Martin's in Hearn. It's, it's ironic because having spent almost, well, it's the best, best part of 18 years in the church that met in the school hall, mm. we went to St Martin's, which is, uh, I, think, well, I think when I arrived there, they're just celebrating 700 years of the parish. Okay. Oh, right. So it's, well, it's, it's kind of yeah. your traditional, traditional ancient yeah. medieval building, mm. Um, mm. a previous incumbent yeah. there was Nicholas Ridley oh, right. the one the guy was burnt at the stake way back when in the middle ages oh. not, so, the, not the well, he was I thought he was one of the secretaries of state Nicholas Ridley was it oh, no, where, was, oh yeah he was actually yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I was thinking of but, uh, but certainly Ridley <laughs> I've got the right name yeah, first yeah, name yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Arnold Ridley oh, <laughs> off dad's army Arnold Ridley. <laughs> yeah. oh, it wasn't it was it, no it, it certainly was, wasn't him no, no. No, okay. don't tell him Mike but yeah certainly Ridley yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. maybe I've got the wrong first name, but yeah. uh, okay. so you rocked up with your guitar in your 101 modern Christian <laughs> song songbook. That didn't go down that well then. Uh, we managed to introduce some of it, okay. but not at first. It was very much the kind of traditional kind of well, traditional church with you know choir, organ, yeah. vestments, crucifer, all of that stuff. Right. So you did your cur curacy, and and did you come straight here? So we were there for just over three and a half years, and then we came from there to the six, mm. which is where we are now. Mm. So that was March 2014. Right, yeah. and so and the six benefice. It's yeah. so you're rector of the six benefice. Is that right? That's right. So what is a ben benefice? Isn't something I'd come across. Well, benefice um, is a grouping of parishes. Right. right. So we it means that we've got six parishes yeah. in this area that have been kind of clustered together. Okay. So we've got seven con so we've got six parishes, yeah. six ancient buildings okay. and seven congregations, one of which meets in a in a village hall. What what's their worship style? Oh, for very varied. So yeah. from um so uplift would be, is meets in a village hall very informal. Mm. Not dissimilar to what we were familiar yeah, yes, with in, like, yeah, um, yeah. back in yeah. back in Wallington, yeah. to um, again more, more more traditional service, very similar to uh, we'd have had in St Martin's yeah. Hearn and yeah. bits in between. Yeah. yeah, before the pandemic, we had yeah. mm. you know, the church down the road. We had what we called um, stepping stones, which was more of a kind of cafe style service. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Again. Offering different kind of flavours mm -hmm. of church, if you like, okay. to, to people. Yeah. And flavours of ice cream, hopefully, if it's a cafe, which would be nice. Well, we never quite got that far. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, there we go. <laughs> but we have, we have, we, but we, we have had a, a cafe in that we were calling Cornerstone, once, which was once a month, yeah. 
where some local uh, people from the congregation made beautiful cakes and right. that would gather yeah. people. So you could have called it Corner Scone, couldn't you? So how do you manage to spread your time then between all those? those well, that's a very interesting question. It's it's a challenge. Yes. Um, but I, I do try to keep connected as best as possible yes. with each of the settings because mm. it's important. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we are part of something bigger. Mm. So out of the, the seven, what's which is your favourite? Uh, <laughs> Strawberry. <laughs> 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 Strawberry and chocolate. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. I no, dare, dare I say, I like all flavours. Have you had to implement much sort of change? Have you just made some slight adjustments? We have instituted some change, um, but it's, it's a kind of steady ongoing process rather than a yes. big leap. Yeah. During the pandemic, we, like everybody, we had to do things quickly or learn to do things quickly online. We couldn't do seven versions of it, so we did one, one online service that went up on YouTube. So that did many many people have commented that that did bring a sense of togetherness. Yeah. Now I haven't I haven't watched. I suppose I should have done watched your uh, online offering out of interest. But what I have watched is a little thing you did, which you called Worship from the Vicarage. I oh think yeah, that's you right. and Andrea did. Yes, that's right. Every yeah. week for quite a while, wasn't it? Yeah, we I did saw, it. Which I thought was great. Basically, it was half an hour of of. Uh, of informal worship and we would share a passage and a chat and some prayers yeah. um, and, and literally it was kind of like in the room that we are in yeah, now we yes. we'd sit yeah. there pray press the button <laughs> and then just see what happens <laughs> what was interesting was that you'd sometimes then go and see uh, depending on how many times it had been shared by people the views mm. that would creep up oh right okay yeah what was your what was your record uh, i can't remember it was certainly at least maybe 3,000. Wow. That, that okay. Is, that's that's decent. Yeah. yeah. But then some weeks yeah. you look at it and think, It's not about the numbers, obviously, but it's, no, it's no, reassuring it's, to know. It's, it's, it was interesting to see how yeah. it's, how yeah. it spread. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought it was, I thought it was great. I thought it was very, yeah, very godly. Really, I thought it was. I'm right. amazed at, you know, talking to, to people who've been talking about how, you know, adaptive and flexible, you know, the church has been with, you know, with the lockdown thing. It's just been absolutely amazing. What's yeah. I mean, and we, it, was, it was literally a case of, Oh my goodness, we can't open the church. Next yeah. Sunday. What do we do? What do we yeah. do? And then also picking up on what other people were doing. So I think the very first occasion was, um, <laughs> Andrea and I, well, Andrea was the camera person wandering around with her iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was out. I was, I was out there with my guitar. Yeah. But that's that was the start. Yeah. yeah. And then our, our curate Simeon, uh, he had established um, a YouTube channel. We had a clue how to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we've, as the months have gone by, we've we've learnt very much in a public way. That's really good. That's, that's really good. Now I'm a bit yeah. behind on technology. I still try to use teletext actually, but. Um, I can't seem to find it at the yeah. moment, but I think my telly's broken. I'll get, I'll get the man from Radio Rentals to come round and uh, if that's yeah, still open. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a few old dinosaurs still yeah. around, aren't there? Anyway, that's yeah. been a great journey, great Julian. Great. Thank you for Fantastic. sharing that with us. And um, yeah. what about outside all this vocational stuff? What do you like to do in your spare time? Spare time. That's an interesting concept. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting oh, that's concept. <laughs> you only have to work on Sunday, don't you? Yeah, that's funny. Uh, no, um, time to make a swift exit, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, well, as you can see, we, we uh, live uh, with fields around us. Yeah, it's great. A, big, a, a lovely nice garden around out the back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've done a lot in the garden, actually. Yeah. Uh, we've enjoyed doing a lot in the garden. Mm. Last year, we, we planted a um, kitchen garden, wild garden area. So, we, we like to be outside. Um, yeah. We like to go for walks every couple of days yeah. or so. Right just yeah. to be out and about. Um, I like to, um, well, I've just picked up, I suppose, being a bit more artistic, mm, doing yes. a bit of drawing. I've noticed yeah, that on the, on the old, yeah. old internet. Yeah. Yes, I've so posted, I posted on a, I created Facebook an Inst or Instagram, in, yeah. Instagram is it? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I created an Instagram page and yeah, uh, yeah. posted a few things there, which yeah. then get shared across the yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just, that's a way of 
Look him up, listeners. It's just Julian Staniforth. Julian on Staniforth. Instagram. Yeah. Very simple. Okay. Actual name. Yeah. yeah. But some some really great your drawings and photography. I think. I, every now and again, I take photos. You know, yeah. just just with yeah. the iPhone. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Just yeah. with the iPhone. Gosh. And, and sometimes they come across very well. I see. And you sometimes have some fancy camera, literally, yeah. you know, then I I edit and yeah. change the change the colours yeah. and then post them. Yeah. What sort of scenic type stuff or what sort of yeah, photos? flowers, yes, flowers and things. Yeah. yeah, a few things if you want. Yeah. To okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. But but something about the drawing. Yeah. It's and um, well, and also dabbling a little bit in watercolour and. Okay. Mm. Well, we can see a few of your. Yeah, well, I assume are your works. Yeah, it's one or two. Adorning bits. the walls and yeah. The yeah. Well, not not those up there, but right. uh, on, yes. on the on the mantelpiece oh, wow. behind. Oh, that's yes. yes. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's a way of relaxing. Yeah. And of course, uh, music as well. Yeah. Yeah. Still, music. Yeah. yeah. Pluck away on that when you every now and again. Not, on not, camera. Not, yeah. not as much as probably you might think, but uh, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, every now and again. And uh, enjoy a nice glass of wine in front of the television, yeah. maybe. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. We do like a glass of wine on a Friday or a Saturday. You know, right. yeah. just to yeah. relax and unwind. But, yeah, yeah we, we've enjoyed um, different wine trips to France um, yeah. with friends. So we've been to yeah. Burgundy, which I think you've been to. Yes, we've done yeah. Burgundy and. And you've done champagne area. Most bottles, haven't you? You've done in the yeah. evening. I have most bottles of an evening. <laughs> of an evening. Yeah, yes. I've, done, I've done most areas of France. <laughs> I tried to get through the whole of France. Yeah, uh, of an evening. Achieved that once, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, yeah, we, no, we do. We do enjoy. We do enjoy yeah. wine. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's great. Well, that's certainly, as you say, you probably don't get uh, much spare time. So plenty of things to fill it, that fill the time that you do have. Um, but anyway, just before you uh, have lunch and we find out what you've brought for lunch, and I'm delighted to see that you've brought a, uh, mm. a capacious luncheon container with you. Yeah, it's Thank also you quite large. Yes. It's also quite large. Yeah. And, um, but we're going to play a, a little game that we like to call My Favourite Things. <laughs> My favourite things is a very simple game. You, you may have understood the rules by now. Julian was just, uh, we give you a category and you just have to tell us your favourite thing in that category. So, and we always ask the first category is your favourite book of the Bible. Yeah, it's interesting. Book of the Bible. I think there's different passages mm. throughout the Bible rather than a particular one. But I think probably the Psalms right. might oh. be because there's so much real stuff in there. Um, it was becoming quite a popular before, choice. The Psalms. Yeah, I think that's winning the league table of yeah, because yeah. because you it, ex famous, yeah. it yeah. kind of expresses all of life in many ways. Okay, so apart from the Bible, what's your favourite book? My favourite book. Um, I think I came across an author recently in recent years called Elena Ferranti. It's an Italian novelist, yeah, okay. and she wrote. A series of novels called the, the Neapolitan novels mm -hmm. and it's the story about it's the first one starts with um, it's called my brilliant friend and it just it's the story of the relationship between these two young girls who meet each other very very young in working class Naples and how their lives go together okay. over yeah. several years but it's very powerful yeah. very powerful yeah. kind of visceral Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah. I haven't come yeah. across oh, that. Yeah. So if you've got to come across that, right. and mm. then and then since then they in Italy they've made TV series of it. Okay. So they've done yeah. the first two books yeah. as TV series. So again, okay. that's been part of lockdown viewing. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But really, really powerful yeah, stuff. Yeah, really interesting. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Julian. That's great. Okay, so uh, unusual. Mm. It's quite a niche choice, yeah. I think. But yeah. uh, probably the whole world will know it in six months' time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so our third category, we always have a top five. Uh, so the category is TV programme, television programme. Mm -hmm. uh, so your top five television programmes of any era you like, really. Um, I suppose I'm thinking of, of most recently yeah, because okay. yeah. we've been in that period of, yeah. Yeah. You know, like I say, watching box sets mm. and, yeah. and stuff like that. So things that have particularly um, stuck in the mind recently have been Line of Duty, yeah, yeah, great show. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, again, this series uh, from Denmark and Sweden, The Bridge. The Bridge. Okay. Been, again, another detective. Another policey thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's been really, yeah. that's been really powerful because the characters are really mm. somehow mm. real. It's not mm. just about the case, but the complexity of their lives as well. Uh, yeah. 
Another one we enjoyed, um, again, a foreign language one was Spiral on, IT, on, on, B, on, on BBC, BBC Four. Mm -hmm. Again, set, and that one set in France. Yeah. Again, quite a, quite a gritty mm. uh, detective. Yeah. Another detective, okay. Um, Spiral. Spiral. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, okay. I haven't heard of it. Yeah. As they yeah. say in French. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Handmaid's Tale is one that we've been continue to yeah. watch as well. I mean, it started off with a book uh, by Margaret Atwood, mm -hmm. and it's continued. We're starting to wonder whether it's meeting it, whether it's yeah. it's been stretched a bit too far. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's a bit, oh, it's a bit, yeah. bit grim. Mm -hmm. um, and I and honest, I mentioned yeah. already about um, the book, my my brilliant friend, the TV series of that. Just a quick one. What about going back a few years? Do you, what, what sort of TV stuff did you used to watch? Oh, you used to watch all the porridge. Sort of... Porridge. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Um, gosh, good question. Good question. Yeah. And there's um, uh, oh, what's this? Albert. <laughs> oh, oh, um, Steptoe Step Step and Step Sons. Oh, right. oh, oh, I was yeah. never allowed to watch Steptoe. It was all. It was considered a bit too coarse. Oh, was it? And I said, of course, we really liked it. Yeah. Dad's Army. Yeah. Oh, classic. 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 Yeah. My, my, yeah. my grandfather. Starring Nicholas Ridley, of course. Nicholas Ridley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Environment Secretary, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. Right. And, and, and um, what's the, what's boy, the only, only Fools and Horses, mm. of course. And so, my, our, our boys in particular yeah. really, have really loved old yeah. Boy, yeah. that one. Yes. They grew up with that one. So, so earlier on in your life, it was all about comedy, really. And then mm. more recently, it's all about gritty police drama. Yeah. So what does yeah, that I tell us, yeah. I wonder? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so we're not a million miles from the seaside. Um, so what's your favourite beach, would you say, Jimmy? Oh, our favourite beach. Yeah, so I've got a particular anyway. memory of a beach yeah. that we went yeah. on, oh gosh, many years ago, a family holiday in Brittany. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and a place called L'Atlantique. And uh, I remember arriving at the campsite uh, after a long drive and it was a very sun, sunny evening going over the dunes uh, yeah. and then seeing the sea. And just what sticks in my mind is just the colours. Mm, yeah. And there was this beautiful turquoise sea and, or, and orange yeah. and it was just yeah. it was just stunning mm. um would have appealed to your artist's eye mm. I yeah i think prob yeah. probably somebody did that a couple a few years ago about three or four years ago we went to uh, an island in the atlantic close to madeira called porto santo mm -hmm. and there's just this extensive yeah. fantastic long beach mm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some lovely yeah. beaches. Don't get yeah. me wrong. There's some lovely beaches yeah. and areas around here. We we're very fortunate to live yes. close to Tankerton Beach, mm. um, and we often yeah. just enjoy on a, again yeah. on a Sunday evening, mm. and the sun's yeah. setting over Whitstable yeah. Bay Perfect. with yeah. a chair Perfect. and a, a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Now, I'd like Brittany and Normandy also have got mm. lovely beaches yeah. and yeah. Normandy yeah. beaches are great. You just don't want to be having a picnic. No. Um, during a a seaborne invasion. No, no. Uh, but apart from that, yeah. it's all right. Yeah. yeah. So finally, on my favourite things, I, I can actually see as I look around this room some uh, 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 drawings of trees, and I've noticed there's quite. Mm. You often have sketches of trees that you mm. post mm. Um, on your thing. Yeah. So, so your favourite tree now, because this is our last category, it's multiple choice. So I'll give you three possible answers. Okay. Your favourite tree. So, um, here we are. So the answers are Coventry, <laughs> um, a vestry, or the lavatory. So Coventry, vestry, lavatory. Your favourite tree? Oh, the choice. <laughs> I'm lost for words on that one. <laughs> it's not like you can say to that, can you, really? Can I say olive tree? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I'm no, okay, so let's forget about the options then. Your yeah. your what is your favourite tree? I suppose an olive tree because oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, behind yeah. us we've got some olive trees on the wall yeah, and that's yes. yeah and that's yeah. That's, yeah. that's a very powerful image oh well, very good yeah. oh well that's enough tree talk yeah uh, and that was my favorite yes. things thank you for that Julian but it's uh, well overdue I think allowing you to uh, have a bit of a breather and, and enjoy your lunch um, so at this point of the conversation we ask you the question tell us reverend what's in your lunchbox yes 
Tell us, Reverend, what's, what's in your, your lunchbox? lunchbox? Well, in my lunchbox. Oh, here we go. It's, not, that. ne it's not necessarily that inspired. Capacious. But I do like a good. I do like a good sound. There's a lot. There's a lot of silver. That must have been a whole bit of silver foil. A whole, so, um, <laughs> a whole yeah, roll. Right. A whole roll of silver foil. Is assuming nice. it's a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, well, it, it, well, could be, it could be a hedgehog. It, there's two sandwiches in here. This is the moment. Moment of reveal. Oh, look at that. So these are, these are kind of in right. spot. My my wife Andrew is much better at sandwich making than I am, but nevertheless, right. yes. this is what I have come up with. So one of them is oh, he's got right. brie, Ooh, uh, brie tomato, a bit of lettuce, home homegrown lettuce yeah. from, from the garden, garden. From the yeah. and the other one is ham with um, cucumber again from the garden, yeah. bit of mayonnaise, bit of mustard, bit of mustard on there. Yeah. So oh, so oh. what type of bread is that? Seeded. Oh, I think it's seeded, seeded, seeded wholemeal or something. Not caraway or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So, like, if you had to choose one, would you go for the brie or would you go for the ham? I'd probably go for the brie. Yeah. Oh, just quickly on the brie one. What else is there? Was there any other sort of dressing in there on the brie? Yeah, there's a, bit of, um, there's a bit of um, Hellman's, Ooh, okay. but also some, yeah. some chutney. I'm, I must say, other mayonnaise is available. Oh, well, no, though we here, have, at, we, here at Take a Pew, yes, we are we're particular. Them advocates of Hellman's. 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 That's <laughs> the, the That's dressing of choice. It is, absolutely. That's Hellman's. Yeah. Yeah. Any commercial sponsorship, very welcome. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so then I have a banana. Ah. Always like, always like a nice it's, banana, which is healthy. Nice, yeah. It's curved as well, it's not a straight one, so yeah. that's good. Is it? Yeah. Is that your favourite fruit, would you say, generally, a banana? Yeah. Um, I do like a banana. No, yeah. I just happened to be, there were some bananas yeah. in the kitchen. It yeah. could have been yeah. an apple. Could have been, yeah. Could, have been, could have been a nectarine, like, quite like yeah. nectarine. Yeah. Nectarine. Yeah. 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 Well, it looks yeah. like it's quite a good old packet of crisps. Oh, it does. And so, uh, oh, what have they killed? Oven, Oven baked bakes. sea salt. Also, there were less calories on there. Um, fewer. Yeah, I think they're, they're sorry, fewer, fewer calories. Sorry, fifty percent less fat. Fifty percent less fat. Fewer. Fifty percent uh, fewer fat. Yes. As you say. And sorry. whilst my wife Andrea was <laughs> not was right. not looking, I sneaked in a bar oh, of a double decker. Oh, oh, oh now no, if you do want to share that one, Julian, because you've got well, lots of other stuff, gonna, that. that's going to be a hard one. But to be honest, yeah. it could have been a it could have been a double decker. It could have been any any, been any bar of chocolate. Yeah. But it was kind of like I had to sneak. Yeah, well yeah, it does feel slightly more wholesome a double deck or something. It feels like more yeah. than a chocolate bar. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree yeah. with your endorsement there. But I know there's one or two in my congregation. One of my congregations, if, if and when they listen to it, won't be surprised that it's a double decker. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Well, it's looked. Are fairly... you listening, Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It looks fairly substantial, and if, so if you had to have a drink with it, would you wash it down with just oh, water, yeah. or would you... a nice uh, glass of drink or uh, probably at lunchtime at the moment? We'd, we might drink, wash it down with some um, some Bottle water. Wine? Okay, so <laughs> no, no, not not this time of the day. We'll save that till later. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or elderflower. We've got some homemade oh, okay. elderflower. Yeah. You might put a little bit of that in. Nice. Give it a little bit of flavour. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Well, that's that's fairly substantial, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing quite how far through that massive lunch you get. Yeah. So we'll just <laughs> we'll just sit back and let you enjoy your lunch. And welcome back and you rejoin us as the Reverend Julian Staniforth, our guest this week, has just polished off yes. an almighty pile He's done a good of job food. How was the double yeah. decker, Julian? <laughs> oh, still going. <laughs> still going. Still got a bit stuck in your teeth. But uh, So we've talked a lot about your journey so far. What uh, what does life hold for you looking forward to? Any, anything in your sights? Oh, gosh. Um, who knows? Yeah. In many ways. I mean... Uh, Yes, I mean, I think in the immediate term, it's, it's as we emerge from this whole kind of pandemic period, is mm. trying to work with our church to see and discern what's the way forwards, really. Yeah. So that's the that's the immediate focus and priority, really, yeah. apart from uh, going on holiday on Monday. <laughs> 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 that's where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, we've, we're going to Crete, yeah. to Crete oh, right. okay. which we were due to go to last year, but yeah. we deferred it this year. And um, yeah, at the moment, all systems go. Yes, yeah. 
Well, I'm, I'm, uh, have a wonderful holiday mm -hmm. and yeah, I yeah, hope well. everything shapes up going forward after that. Yeah, uh, thank yeah. you. Thank I'm sure you. God will continue to be by your side as you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that brings us to the part of the show that involves some theological input. You'll be pleased mm -hmm. to know, finally. Shortly, you'll hopefully be able to bring us a spiritual pearl of wisdom. But just before that, we'd like you to help us with a matter which has caused us some pause for thought. Mm, yes, indeed. Now, I know it's dangerous and we can't help seeing stuff on the internet. But this week, there was something particular that's caught our eye. So we'd like to ask you... Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Yes, is it true? Reverend Julian Staniforth. Is it true that God is in fact a fish? Now, you may think this is a ridiculous question, but we've done a lot of research and there's quite a lot of evidence for this. Yes, there is. For example, the word God is very much like the word cod. And the secret sign the early Christians used was the shape of a fish. And indeed, some people still use that sign on the back of their car. What's more, Jesus found his first disciples catching fish and told them to stop doing that and rather to catch humans. Yes, and of course, when God in Noah's time sent his great flood to wipe everything out, the fish were unaffected. And what's more, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the Hebrew language famously didn't have vowels. So the word spirit is indistinguishable from the word sprat. So, is it true, is it true, is it true, is it true? Yes, is it true? What do you think, Julian? We're, we're very troubled by this. We are, yeah. yeah. I'm not so sure God is a fish, but I can oh. see all of the images that you're referring to. And the first yeah. one that occurred to me was was about um, the sign of the fish. Yes. Yeah. The symbolism yeah. of it's that. The for, image of God. For the, early, yeah. for the early church, that expressed so much about who the God as revealed by Jesus is, yeah. about what, what he did. I can never quite remember all the letters, mm. yeah. but it's, it's um, of course, yeah. there's, the word is ichthus, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, ichthus. Yeah. ichthus. Yeah. Because yeah. I think there's a lot of supporting evidence for the idea that, that God is a fish. I think all those things. I, I, um, but when Jesus did appear to his disciples after the resurrection, in fact, yes, yeah. if, you know, to be fair, he did tell them exactly how to catch a lot yeah. of fish. Yeah. So he'd obviously changed his mind. And mm -hmm. he had breakfast with them and he cooked a fish. So there are some, there is some counter evidence. And of is course, there? Jesus yeah. um, did say that whoever had seen him had seen the father so yes. unless Jesus yes. looked very like a halibut, <laughs> it's, it's, I think is unlikely. Although he could have been a bit chubby. Yeah. Anyway, I think we have to accept no, that that particular internet are. theory yeah, is a red herring. Yeah, we're carping on too much. And with that, Julian, perhaps you would bless us with your spiritual pearl of wisdom. It's a spiritual pearl of wisdom. I want to read a passage that comes from the book of Numbers and it's what is known as in my, this Bible here is the priestly blessing where it says the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and of course if you think last year we were having the pandemic those words were turned into a song you remember the song the blessing that went all around the world and um, but it, they also have had a, a particular personal resonance in, in the last few months um, my, my father-in-law who I've mentioned uh, he died uh, at the end of January and um, his last words to us on, the, on his last day, he, he rang each member of the family, were those very words. They were expressed not so much in the you, but in, in the us. He died the following day. Um, and in his own life, as we reflect on who he was, um, part of his practice, if you like, as a, as a minister, as a Christian, was somebody who would bless people wherever and um, 
one particular story that sticks in mind, uh, again, it came from, from Andrew, my wife was on one hospital visit. Um, at the end of the hospital visit, he, he said to the nurse, make, look, something along the lines of, may, may God bless you. It may have been all of those words, I don't know. But the, Im the impact of that for that, for that nurse was, was really profound because somebody has said to, she said, nobody has ever spoken to me like that before. Nobody has said words of blessing over me like that before. So for me, this whole theme of blessing has become really important to the extent that in our, in our benefits, those who are listening maybe will know that I will talk a lot about being the people who bless in terms of not just how we seek to be, but also that it might be something that our, our communities would start and hope to, to recognise about by who and how we are. And it's something that everybody can do. We may not know what the fruit of that may be, but imagine the impact if more and more of us as Christians were just to take that simple step of reaching out and saying to our friends, neighbours, family members, may God bless you. Just think what the impact of that may be. It's a spiritual of wisdom. Wow. Thank you, Julian. And Gosh. that word itself was a blessing. It was indeed. But uh, I'm afraid to say we're nearly at the end of our visit here to Newington. One, two, three. Oh. But I'm equally afraid to say that we do just have time for... Simon, if you really must, what's your random question for Julian? Oh, OK. Well, thank you, Ian. Well, my random question for you, Julian, is what actually is the best thing since sliced bread? The best thing since sliced yeah, bread? What actually is? What actually is, what actually is, is, the, best is the best thing, thing since, sliced, since bread. sliced bread? People say it all the time, don't they? But yeah, yeah. A nice glass of red. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> A nice glass yeah, nice That certainly yeah, be, would yeah. be nice to have with some sliced bread. I, see, I don't really understand why. You think of all the things that have been invented yeah. ever. Mm. So you have the wheel, then you have crop rotation. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really an invention, I suppose, is it? But you have like, like penicillin. Pen penicillin. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, just all the industrial stuff, the internal yeah. combustion yeah. engine. But out of all of, out of the pantheon of choose. all of those things, the thing held up as the beacon of invention mm -hmm genius is sliced bread and of course if you're French the French may say sliced bread and why is that yes, so is. they say that in France then as that expression do they have that expression yeah. yes I wonder actually that's interesting what do other yeah. countries if other countries have a similar saying do they have a similar saying I know it's oh, this so from what I've read it looks like it's an it was American sort of saying the best thing okay. well from 1928 yeah. could be completely right. wrong but mm. So it must be, so obviously, yeah, but in other countries, what do mm. they say? Yeah, you're quite right. Mm. The best thing since... Whatever. Potted. I, I just think it's very odd. I don't I don't see what sliced yeah. bread's claim to fame really is, to be yeah. honest. It's very, yeah. very strange. It's all a bit random. It all is a bit so, um, hence, yeah. <laughs> it is a bit random, exactly. Well, very strange. Yes, very strange yeah. uh, question. It was strange. It was but, random, uh, Well, it? there we go. I can I only apologise. I should get out more. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can only apologise to listeners and to you, Julian, indeed. I don't know yes. where he gets them from. But that was... Well, Julian, it was so good uh, catching up with you and good to see you. Thank you for letting us storm the gates of Newington. <laughs> and thank you for joining us on the show. Very welcome. And so can I close with words of this blessing? Yes, please do. Yes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you or those you know, love, care for, pray for this day and evermore. Amen. Amen, Amen. indeed. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, Julian. You. Thank you. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. Simon and I will be with you again soon for yet another fab guest 
for another fab conversation on another fab episode of the Take A Pew podcast. But for now, it's Toodle Pip from me. And Tatty Boy from me. Join us again next time as we Take A Pew. Take